I have a big problem. My voxel game isn't a game. It's a voxel engine. I bet no one saw that coming. No, not really. A few years ago, I realized I wanted to make my own voxel game inspired by Cube World, an RPG game focused on exploration and combat as opposed to mining and crafting. This game has nothing in common with Minecraft, I promise you. So I started working on this super challenging but rewarding journey of making a voxel game, or shall I say, engine, from scratch. I dove into everything from drawing triangles to the screen, to compressing vertex data, chunk queuing, implementing multi-threading, baked ambient occlusion, I even tackled procedural tree generation using a space colonization algorithm. I achieved some really wild optimizations utilizing binary hacks to make my greedy measure incredibly fast. And then it hit me! My adventure started wanting to make a voxel game, but somewhere along the way I fell in love with the voxel engine technology itself. Now I wouldn't want to change a thing. Working on voxel engines has been one of the most fulfilling programming experiences I've ever had. But my dream of creating a game still remains. So after the last video where I made this blazingly fast binary video measure, I decided it was time to shift gears. No more voxel engine development for now, it is time to make some gameplay happen. But you see, I want to avoid the mistake of building gameplay features, only to realize I need to rewrite everything to support multiplayer later on. So before diving into gameplay, I need to solve networking. It will be fun! Right? Now, it's not my first rodeo dealing with networking. The first voxel game I made, I actually used Unity and I, I did have networking there. The implementation was pretty rough though. One of the catalysts that led me to leave Unity and start making things from scratch with Rust instead was partly because of the hard time I had with networking and also I love the Rust programming language and I missed it every time I was using Unity, so. Anyway, I did have playtests back then and despite the game's simplicity and limited combat features, Multiplayer brought a sense of connection that added life to the game even in its roughest form. And that is why as ambitious as this project may already be, I cannot imagine leaving multiplayer out. The goal I have for my game when it comes to multiplayer is simply to connect friends together. We're talking maybe a max of 20 players, that sounds a lot already. And to do that cheaply and wide scale, without bankrupting myself, my first idea was to implement the relay system. Instead of hosting these bulky game servers myself, what if the only thing my server does is to pass messages between the players? It's a form of peer-to-peer -peer connection, but instead of talking to each other player directly, resulting in your IP address leaking, which is a bad thing, we instead just talk to one relay that pass messages between the players. I have actually already built this relay system and I made a video about it here. With this I can implement a regular client server architecture using this relay where the host player will be authoritative and everyone talks to the host. That would however put all the pressure on the player host to run all the physics. That might be fine, but I am actually currently experimenting with a more peer-to-peer -peer like solution where the authority is spread out over all the players. There are pros and cons to any method you choose, and you should take everything I say with a grain of salt, because I am experimenting and learning as I'm going. Okay, stop blabbing what have I actually been working on. Well, I'm currently dealing with synchronization code. How do we keep worlds in sync? Of course, sending packets over the network takes time, and this latency is really problematic, seeing as all the state updates you get is actually a world state, but in the past. Dealing with this latency problem is an art in itself, and I would say it's equally mesmerizing as the timeline of back to the the future. You really have to account for what timeline you are in. The amount of hours I've spent reading the logs, visualizing each packet's journey, trying to figure out why things keep desynchronizing is uncountable. And after enough late nights and what felt like dead ends, I lost steam. My insistence on badly wanting to get multiplayer code to work well, combined with the lack of results, completely derailed my productivity. Hence the large gap in releasing videos. I would love to come back with a killer video, the kind where I've conquered every problem, neatly tied up all the loose ends, but that's actually part of my struggle. I've been stuck thinking I need to reach this mythical finished state of this project before I would allow myself to hit record. That makes sense when you have momentum, but right now I just need a win. Even a small one. So here I am bringing you along even if I don't have it all figured out. And that's what I want to focus this video on. I've tried starting other smaller projects to break this cycle and build back momentum again to get something anything out there, but for some reason my curiosity wasn't there with these projects. And the longer I've been away from making videos, the harder it gets to return, because there's this self-imposed pressure thinking, what have I achieved all this time away? I want to come back with a major breakthrough on my projects, but I have realized making this exact video you are watching right now might just be exactly what I need to complete to build back this momentum again. So here is where I'm at now. 
I am super close to have a perfect client side prediction. This is the current demo I'm working on. This local player you have full authority over, but the remote player is owned by the other player. Let's say you want to push or move the other player. What we have to do is perform this push locally, so we see the player moving instantly. But then when we get the state back from the other player saying, hey, I'm over here, we need to go back in time and see where our prediction corrects that we would land on this location in this world take. What makes this even harder is packets aren't guaranteed to arrive at the same time or even in the same order. This diagram should actually look something like this. And dealing with the order and timing of execution is one of the hardest things to get right. One part I'm utilizing to fix that is a jitter buffer, but I won't actually dive into the details of that. I should be able to get the perfect simulation running this locally, and I am so close. There is just this one mystical one tick delay that happens once in a while, and it's driving me insane! Would you like to see what it's like to work on networking? Well, here we go. Okay, starting the relay. Starting the game. Relay is working fine. The game is working fine. I can move around, I can jump. Okay, let's try to move this other player. See what happens. Everything's fine. Wow. Okay. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Okay, that something happened there. Prediction error. Let's go to the first instance. World tick. 551 something went very wrong. What happened this world tick? We jumped! Let's go to the remote player, 451. There we are, we received this packet over here, and then we jumped. And then we send the result. Everything looks fine! Here I send 451. Wait a minute, I said it twice! Why? 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49. <laughs> My world's on fire, how about yours? I would love to get into the details of the code, but there is a massive amount of context one would need to have to understand how these smaller parts fit into the whole thing. And let's not forget that I'm learning as I'm experimenting. I feel so close to being able to integrate this into the voxel engine, so that I'm not just working with this isolated demo. Because of my inactivity, I've decided to put a pause on my Patreon page. I'm also refunding 3 months of payments, that's the most you can do on Patreon. It doesn't feel right to get donations, if I'm not actually producing things. I shall now get back to work, bye bye.